Hello everybody, welcome back to the C tutorial series. I know it's been a while, uh, it's February now, but uh, we're going to get right back into it with the C tutorial series. And we're going to do the first example where we're going to be implementing a hello world as kind of a little introduction. Uh, before we get into it, I'm going to make a few notes. You may notice I'm on Windows, not Ubuntu, and that is because my screen recorder works a lot better on Windows. Uh, on Ubuntu, I didn't like the way the quality turned out. Uh, so I'm um, on Windows now. No, this is not an IDE. This is just a text editor, a beautiful text editor, might I add. Uh, but yeah, like I said, I won't be using an IDE for this tutorial series, or will I be use one very often because, like I said, they're evil. And yeah, so the program we're going to make is right here. Uh, what I'm using for this, because I'm not using Ubuntu, is I'm using a Linux emulator environment. It's called Seagwin, I believe. I don't know how to pronounce it. C-Y-G-Win. And uh, it's going to be in the download below. And it's kind of like you just run this terminal. And it's like a terminal from Linux, but it runs through the command prompts. It's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, I've structured it the same way we had it done from the first tutorial. So you can follow it either way. You can do it on Windows or on Linux. It doesn't matter. I have it structured the same way. The only difference is instead of using Vim now, I'm going to be using Atom. Uh, because I love this text editor. Okay, so let's go ahead and get right into it. So the program we're going to be making today is, uh, well, let me show you. That's what it's going to do. It's going to print Hello World on the screen. Not too impressive, but it is the basic building blocks of your first language. Uh, that is the Hello World is like the the prey to the programming gods. It's the first program you write for any new language you learn. So that's why we're going to write it. Anyway, so let's go right into it. Let's let's jump into writing it. So we've got t1.c, which is uh, we didn't implement, and we've got makefile. I have implemented this. I will show you how to implement this in the next tutorial. The only reason I did was to build it to actually show you guys the oh uh, <laughs> the, the actual uh, executable and what we're going to be making, but I'm not going to implement this in this tutorial. So let's go ahead and write it. So the first thing we're going to want to write in C, and it may seem odd because most people don't start with this, but I'm going to start with comments. So there's two right ways you can write comments, a double slash or a s uh, slash atterisk or an and ending with an atterisk slash. It's a little bit confusing. The purpose of the slash atterisk and the atterisk slash is like a, um, a multi-line comment. So you can go um, and make multi-line comments. I prefer these comments over double slash. Double slash just makes a one-line comment, and then anything below it is just, um, it's actually read and compiled. Um, so comments in code, they're not actually compiled, they're not put into the program's binary, they're just kind of there for you to, uh, for readability for the source code, right? Because, um, and really, comments are very important. So let's write our first comment. We're going to document. We're going to put the title, the purpose, the author, and the date. You should do this at the top of all of your programs and also document what your program is doing along the way. So let's start with that. So I'm going to do title, and I'm going to put C, hello world introduction, I guess. Yeah, I'll do that. And the purpose, and I like lining things up. Uh, you don't have to, I guess. I just, I, I like doing it like that. Oh my god, I can't type today. Okay, and and the date is 2-1-2016. Okay, and we're going to end that comment off with an address slash. Now, now I'm going to explain why documentation is very important. Um, in industry, like in professional code, it is extremely important. You could be the best program in the world and make the most efficient and awesome program ever and you, you'd you probably still get denied the job and the reason is nobody can read your code um, it, it you, how good your code is and how efficient it is doesn't matter but the documentation matters as well because what industries want is they want your code to be maintainable so if you're away or if you leave they want somebody to be able to maintain it and actually be able to build upon it. If nobody can understand your code except yourself, it's it's really useless to them because they can't really do anything with it. They're too reliant on you. So you want to be able to make it easy for others to follow. And as that quote goes, um, you know, anybody can make code that a computer can read, but good programmers make code that humans can read as well. Um, and this also goes for you. I mean, if you're going to write code you know, six months from now, you're going to look back and you're going to think, what the hell was I doing there? And if you don't have a comment there, you're not going to know, and it's going to be really confusing for you. So it's just, it's better to, to document your code. Okay, so now that we've got that comment covered, now we're going to actually work on including something. So because we're going to be using printf, it's a 
format printing. Uh, it's a function included in the libc. We're going to need to include a library that we're going to use. And include is known as a preprocessor directive. And what those basically are is anything that is compiled, uh, that is done before the code is actually executed. Um, some common examples of preprocessor directives are includes, defines, if and def, that's for uh, header files mostly. Um, defines, by the way, I'm not going to go into this too much just yet, but let me just say uh, most of the time it's not considered safe. You want to use uh, constants. But anyway, we're going to worry about include for now. So we're going to include something called the standard input output library. So that's stdio.h. Now you may have noticed I'm using angular brackets right here. And the reason for that is, okay, you guys might have seen C code before and you'll see maybe you want to include a security library. Okay, maybe you're writing an, a web app or something and you'll see that. There is a big difference between using double quotes and using angular brackets for your includes. The difference is using double quotes, um, you're, you're, you're telling it look in the same directory as where the C file is. Or if it's in another folder, like say uh, your own custom library folder, you do uh, like that, right? And you're telling it look at that specific directory, relative or absolute. What these Angular brackets are saying is look where the standard libraries are on the system. Look there first. If you can't find it there, then maybe look for a relative directory. So when you're using libraries, you want to use Angular brackets. When you're using your own header files, you want to use double quotes. Okay, but we're not going to get into that yet. So just leave it at stdio.h, and I'm going to leave a little comment here because, like I said, we love comments. So we're going to put um, include library needed for printf. Okay. So now we're going to get into the actual main function. So let me write it out, and then I'll explain what we're doing really quick. So argc v. Uh, yep, okay, that is correct. So let me explain what I just wrote here, because this looks kind of cryptic to you if you're new to C, uh, or C++. Int, what this is basically saying is the f what we have before the function name is called a function uh, return type declaration. So what I'm basically saying by saying int here, which is short for integer, I'm saying that the function main is going to return an integer. If I wanted to put void here, I'm basically saying I don't want it to return anything. If I want to put char, I'm going to return a character. Um, if I'm going to put double, I want it to return a double. The standard thing to use for the main entry point in C is integer, so we're just going to stick with, with that. So um, so it declared an integer as this return type or a whole number if you don't know what an integer is. These are signed by default, so they can be positive or negative. Uh, to make it unsigned, we'd have to actually add an unsigned prefix to it, uh, which we're not going to do because we don't need to do that. And uh, yeah, like I said, this is called the main entry point. So let's talk about the parameters here. So this int argc, that stands for arg count. Uh, this is the standard function header. So this will always be above or equal to 1 because the program name itself, let me go back into here, uh, right here, that is considered an argument right to the command line. So you have one argument there. If we did uh, t1 hello, that would be two arguments. We're not really doing anything with any other arguments, so it doesn't make a difference if we use 1, 2, 3, 5, 5,000. Uh, we can use however many we want and they don't really change how the program runs, but so right now that would return uh, 2. Now this, char star arg v, this is basically pointing to an array of strings for all of the arguments. So right here in this second one, if we tried to get the arg v at index 0, we would get dot slash t1. If we got the arg v at index 1, we would get hello. If we put another one here, like world, we could use arg v uh, uh, index 2 and it would return world. So it's it's pointing to an array of all of the C strings that are included when the program is run. Uh, we'll talk about that more <clears throat> later on when we get into data types and stuff like that. So now we're going to get into the function that actually does something. We're going to use printf and we're going to put uh, hello world. Oh, can't, ex can't forget the exp oh my god. 
Oh my, there we go. Okay. And we're just going to return zero. That's the standard. Another thing you could do, I believe, it's exit underscore success. It's like a constant that's built in, um, but I'm just going to return zero. But I believe you can do that if you want to, just to make your code, I don't know. It's, it's a personal preference, really. So that is our code right there. That will go ahead and run. And just to show you guys that, we can do make. I'm not going to show you how to implement that yet, though. And there we go. It'll print off hello world. So there we go, we printed off a basic program. Now I am going to show you guys one more way, and this is using a variable. So, instead of just, uh, oh my god, let's put uh, char, and then that should be, a, is it 11 characters? I believe it's 11. Yeah, it's 11 characters. Uh, well, 12, and then you have the, yeah. So I'm just going to do 12, actually, uh, just to leave some space with the null terminator. And we're going to do hello world equals hello world. Okay, so what we've basically done here is we've declared an integer called hello world and we're storing the uh, C string hello world in an array of characters. This is important, especially for you people who might have worked with C++ before. C does not have strings because string is a class and C does not have classes. That was the whole purpose of C++ or what it was originally called C with classes. So. Strings in C++ are really an array of characters, um, and that's called a C-style string. So you have a character byte for H, a character byte for E, and then so on, and then at the end you have a null byte, uh, 0x00, which is a null terminator, and we'll talk about that more later on, but that's just basically what's going on here. Now, here I'm going to capitalize on something very important. Here is where we're going to put percent %s, and we're going to put hello world. Now format string, what that allows you to do is print a string with multiple things in it for substitution. So let's say we wanted to do an age. Um, I'm just going to do it really quick. So int age equals, I don't know, let's say the person's 10, I don't know why. And we'll just go um, your age is, and then you would do i for integer, right? And then you just do age, and it would print your age is 10. So what it basically does is takes these format flags and it replaces them with what you have as the arguments coming after it. Uh, some of the common ones are percent %i for integer, percent %d for double, and percent %s for uh, c-style string. Um, so we're going to use percent %s for now, and we're going to put hello world. Now, I'm going to build this right now to show you guys that this works. Uh, oh, wait, i got to make it first. Oh, wait, hold on. Undeclared first use hello world mm, hello world and declared first use expected identifier before it oh what was I thinking there I realized what I did that was the wrong spot my mistake see mistakes like that happen in C sometimes and then if we run it look at that it says hello world perfectly fine now you may be thinking we're not, you know, we're not concatenating any other strings on here. Why do we have to use this? Why can't we just do that, right? And I think that actually will run. Let me check. I th I'm pretty sure, yeah, it will run. And it works. This is very bad. And you might not know this, and I've actually seen it done a lot in programs. And the reason is this is vulnerable to a string for a format string attack. And I'm not going to go fully into how that works, but basically this can be used to hijack the program. Uh, it makes it vulnerable, bad, security, bad. So make sure to always use the format string as what it's for. If you're going to print a variable, use the flag. Don't just put it in the, in the first argument, okay? And then we'll just do it like that. I'm going to take that out. And... Uh, yeah, that makes our Hello World program a little bit more complicated, but that was just to show you guys how you can use variables as well. I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. If you did, please leave a like below. I know it might be a little bit of a long tutorial, but um, I just wanted to kind of explain everything that was going on with C with comments and stuff like that, and uh, preprocessor directives. We talked about the main entry point, some variables, um, the printf string format vulnerability, which you don't want to be vulnerable to, and uh, returning uh, return types and uh, returning in. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and in the next tutorial we're going to be going into uh, the make file and actually compiling, um, and that should be a short video. So yeah, I'll see you guys later.